super bright Jupiter and Venus share the sky with three cosmic birds for Thanksgiving week. Hey there, stargazers. I'm Dean Regis, outreach astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Pla Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And we're here to help you know what you're looking at when you go outside at night and look, look up. up. Cosmically speaking, this Thanksgiving is super because in addition to the usual Thanksgiving turkey on the table, we have our annual appearance of three cosmic birds in the sky, which you can see right after dinner all week long. Plus, this year they are joined by the two brightest planets, Venus and Jupiter. Okay, we've got our sky set up for any clear night this Thanksgiving week, about 6.30 p.m. your local time facing west, where close to the horizon you'll see the brightest planet of them all, super bright Earth-sized Venus. Venus is on the other side of the solar system right now and is almost 50% farther than the Sun. Venus is always very bright because it reflects more of the Sun's light, almost two-thirds, than any of the other planets. In comparison, the Moon only reflects about 7% of the light it gets from the Sun, while Jupiter reflects about half the light reaching it from the Sun. Then, if you look higher above the horizon, you'll easily spot the three bright stars which mark the points of what is officially called the Summer Triangle but which every November I unofficially call the Thanksgiving Poultry Triangle. You see, historically, these stars have always been associated with cosmic birds. The highest star is Deneb, the bright tail star of Cygnus the Swan. So, in addition to our Thanksgiving turkey, we have a heavenly swan to be thankful for. The bright star farthest to the left in the triangle is Altair, the brightest star of another bird, Aquila the Eagle. But the brightest of the three stars, and the one closest to the northwest horizon, is Vega, the brightest star of Lyra the Harp, which, strange as it may sound, has had more feathery incarnations than the other two put together. You see, Lyra was not always a harp. In fact, long ago, before it became a lyre, it was a cosmic turtle. But before it was a turtle, it was a bird of one sort or another. Ancient records tell us that Lyra's association with the birds goes back over 2,000 years. In ancient India, Lyra was seen as a heavenly vulture, and in Babylon, it was a great mythological storm bird named Uraka. Some desert peoples of ancient Arabia saw it as two birds, the desert eagle and, would you believe, a cosmic goose? Lyra was also once known as an osprey and a wood falcon. Anyone for wood falcon or osprey drumstick? At any rate, only in the past couple hundred years or so have we in the West seen Lyra exclusively as a liar. In fact, at the time of the American Revolution, these stars were still seen as a bird, an eagle, but holding a liar in its beak. But since then, the eagle has flown away and only the liar remains. So perhaps we should play liar music after Thanksgiving dinner. So, this Thanksgiving weekend after you've had turkey up to here, just step outside after dinner and look into the western sky for the brilliant planet Venus and some birds of a different feather. And thank the heavens above you'll never get them in your leftovers. But if three cosmic birds and super bright Venus aren't enough for you, then simply turn around and face east and high above the horizon you'll see brilliant Jupiter, the planet which is number two in brightness because even though it's much larger than Venus, it's also much, much farther away than Venus, nearly three times farther from us. The light from Venus takes almost 12 and a half minutes to get here, while the light from Jupiter will take about 35 minutes. And if that seems too long to wait, well, my wife's sweet potato pie takes longer than that to bake, which will make this Thanksgiving week extra special. Keep, Keep looking, looking up. up.